Okay, Year 7, welcome back to Part 6 of the Ghost Shooter tutorial. Um, for this lesson, we're going to do a couple of cool things, like giving our monsters some health and seeing if maybe we can do a little bit of a challenge where you guys can try and give your player its health as well. Um, so just starting off again, remembering that we're just going to open up, you know, going to Cloud, signing into your Google account, and then getting it to load and then finding your folder. And we're looking for the C3P file as always. Okay. So last lesson, we actually finished up some of the events. We're actually, we're going to add some more to these later, but at the moment you should have one, two, three, four, five events in here. Um, and then we had our monsters and we made more of them. We put our, uh, our little sprites over here, the gun and the explosion, which we don't want to see, out, off into a dead zone. And then we have a little player and we moved uh, the bullet being shot from the head to the bullet, sorry, the gun. That is where we're up to. Today, we're actually going to start by giving our monsters some health. Now, we do this with a function called instance variable. When we talk about an instance variable, it's a variable that can be changed um, which means that it can be stored in a separate variable. Now, that's a very confusing sentence. That is the definition of it. What that means is, because we're saying instance, it means that it's happening once. So it's a overarching variable that we give to one sprite. So in this instance, we're going to do it to our monsters. Now, because they're all the same sprite just copied, it will go towards every single one of these. It's like giving um, background coding to something. In this instance, it's going to be their health. So we're going to set up a function that these monsters have some health in them. Therefore, when we shoot our bullet, we actually have to shoot the bullet multiple times in order to actually kill the monsters. Um, likewise, you can give health to your player if you wanted to. You could give health to your bullets. So maybe like that it, it shoots and it starts bouncing around for a while before it actually dies. You could give your health to anything that you want. Um, we can also use this for things like timers for certain things. We're not going to do that in this game, but that's what this is for. So... To do so, what we're going to do, instead of clicking on a single monster, you're going to come over to your project bar and you're going to scroll down and find where your monster is and you're going to click on that. When you do that, you'll notice that not only did one monster get highlighted, all of them highlighted themselves. So just to make sure that you know, you're know you giving this instance variable to all of your monsters, just click into your project bar. You're then going to come over to the other side in your properties bar. Now, if you actually just look, there's a thing here that already says instance variables. Again, it says add slash edit, and then they got the little blue underline hyperlink. If you click on that, it should bring up a little uh, box, the same as when you were adding your behaviors. We are then gonna come down and we are going to click add new instance variable. Now, because we're giving it health, we're just going to call it health, but I'm going to get you to call it health um, M for monster, just so that we don't get confused when we have uh, our, when we put uh, health into our player as well, it get, it's going to get very confusing. Now, obviously, because we're working with health, we're going to keep it with numbers because we want the numbers to go down so that, you know, like... Say we give it, you know, five health and we our bullets take one health away, it means that you're going to end up with five shots to kill one monster. It's just the working with numbers. And for now, we're going to give it five health. Now, I will let you have a play around with that. If you decide that you want your monster to have ten health, um, that is absolutely fine. It just means it's going to be harder for you to kill your monsters completely up to you what you want to do. Obviously don't give them a hundred because you can't test your game. You have to sit there for a while testing your game. I'd probably stick with five for now just so that you can understand if something's working or not. And then when we get to the end where you can alter it yourself, go for it. Okay. So once you put five in and you'll notice it will pop up here. So this is your health. We then have to go and we have to actually code it into our game. So at the moment, this is just 
a number that's floating in space and it hasn't been attached to anything. So we're going to do that now. So we're going to go back to our event sheet and we're going to start adding some code in. Now, if we look at our code from before, we had a, a, uh, a line of events that was bullet on collision with monster, monster destroy. What we're going to do is we're going to right click or two finger click on monster destroy and you should have a little drop down menu that appears. We're going to go down until we find replace action. And when we click on that, it should pop up with the box and making sure it says action up the top here. We're then going to change this to we're going to keep monster the same, but we're going to change it from destroy um, to now be subtract from. Now, you'll notice that this is under the instance variable little tab here. This would not work if we don't have an instance variable in there. Because we've put one in there now, and you can even see it on the side here in my properties bar, we can now use this. So hit that. And then this is um, every time the bullet hits the monster, this is what it's going to subtract from the health. So for now, I'm going to keep it at one. Therefore, it means that it's going to take me five bullets to kill one monster. Um, if you wanted to make it easier, you just bring this number up. Um, so you can bring it up to like two. That means it's going to take three bullets to kill the monster. If you want um, it to be really easy, you can bring it up to five. That means it's just going to be one. You just got to work out your maths on this. So once you've done it, you can then hit done. And it should change now to monster subtract from health M. Now, because we've actually taken away monster destroy, the program now doesn't understand that when the health hits zero, the monsters will destroy. So if I go and play it, I'll show you what I mean. If I start shooting, let's go with this monster, I've shot that more than five times. It's no longer destroying because we've taken that piece of coding out. So what we have to do then is we have to link the fact that the health is going down to the fact that we want it to be destroyed after um, that, that's been done. So what we're going to do then is we are going to add a new event and we're going to pop in um, monster and then we're going to go and find compare instance variable. So compare and then you can go and find it. It should be under the tab instance variables. There we are. Compare instance variables. So we're going to go into that. What we want for this is we want it to show that when the health is less than or equal to zero, then it will start being able to be destroyed and stuff like that. So for this, you're going to, the compare bit, instead of equal to, we're going to go less than or equal to, so less or equal, and we're going to keep it zero. So it just means that once the health hits zero or below, then something will happen. So there's your first half. Um, and then we're going to go for the action. So for this bit, we're going to put in two things. First things first, we're going to put in the monster destroy again. So that means now that when you shoot them and the health hits at zero, then monster will be destroyed. And then we're also going to put in a spawning of an explosion just for some flair. So we're then going to go monster, spawn another object, and we're going to pop in the explosion. Leave it on layer zero. We still haven't changed layer and leave it on image point zero. The monster only has one image point for now and done. So now if we just go save, remembering to make sure this comes up. Um, if we hit save and then play, you should be able to shoot this monster and eventually it will disappear. And when it actually does disappear, if I can get it far away, an explosion spawns in. But you'll notice now we still have a player that has no health and therefore they can run over the top of you however they see fit. So my challenge to you this lesson is that you do the same thing for your player. I want to see if you can do it. Try and do it before you look at the next part. I will give you the answer in the next part, but I want you to see if you can get it yourself now that we've done one for the monster. So I'm going to leave this lesson here and I want to see if you can do that uh, the health 
for the player. Now, obviously, again, don't give your player too much health because we want to see if it actually works, but it would be good at least give it five, same as your monster. So remembering you can follow the exact same steps, but all you have to do is put your monster instead. Good luck. I'll see you in the next part.